Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to call the City of Twinsburg caucus meeting for March 28th, 2023 to order. It is 7 p.m. Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Bowen. I'm here. Mr. Fury. Here. Mr. Deeds. Here. Mrs. Labby. Here. Mr. Post. Here. Mrs. Walker. Mr. Barr. Thank you. Do we have any presentations this evening, Shannon? There are none. Any items for discussion? Council? Anyone? Mayor? Mr. Bazan? No, uh -uh. All right. Do we have any audience participation this evening? There is none. All right. All right. Moving on to pending legislation. Ordinance number 29 2023. This ordinance is to authorize the mayor to apply and accept, if received, the 2023 Energizing Community Program grant through NOPEC. These grants are for various energy efficiency programs and products. This ordinance will be on its third and final reading this evening with an emergency clause added. Any discussion? No. Next up is Ordinance 34, 2023. This ordinance is to amend Section 149 of the codified ordinances regarding fees and deposits. The addition to this section will allow the city to include a 3% convenience fees when credit cards are used to pay for city events or services. This will also be on its third and final reading this evening. Any discussion? Well, thank you. Ordinance 43, 2023. This ordinance is to amend section 929 of the code regarding trees. Amy Moore spoke at the last meeting about this section of the code. This ordinance will be on its second reading this evening. Ordinance 44, 2023. This ordinance is to amend section 1174.05 and 1195.05 of the code regarding driveways. Ms. Moore spoke at the last meeting about this. There will be a public hearing on this on April 25th at 6.45 p.m. This ordinance will be on its second reading this evening. Any discussion? Mr. Post? I'll go back, did you say ordinance 43, the last one, on its second reading? Stands on the second reading? That's correct. 43 will stand, it's on its first reading. Tonight it will be its second It will reading. stand on its second reading. Gotcha. Gotcha, okay. Uh, Sorry, did I misspeak? I apologize. No, I did, it, you did misspeak. If you did misspeak, I apologize. Okay. I just... You did it right, you just heard it wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, ordinance. Make sure run the up and up. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Right. Very good. Thank you. Ordinance 46 2023. This ordinance is to purchase a 2024 truck for use by wastewater. The purchase will be made using State of Ohio Procurement Program. Total cost of the truck is $124,788. This purchase was approved by Capital Improvements Board, Finance Committee, and in the budget that was passed by Council. The reason for the emergency is to allow for the purchase prior to the current contract price expiring and also to allow for the extensive build time. Any discussion on Ordinance 46? No. Ordinance 47. This ordinance is to purchase two trucks for use by the service department. As with Ordinance 46, this purchase will be made using State of Ohio Procurement Program. Total cost for both trucks with upfitting is $471,181.68. This purchase was also approved by Capital Improvements Board, Finance Committee, and in the budget that was passed by Council. The reason for the emergency is to allow for the purchase prior to the current contract price expiring, as the new contract price has a price increase. Any discussion on Ordinance 47? Ordinance 48, 2023. This ordinance is to authorize the mayor to enter into a contract with the Chagrin Valley Engineering for final plans prepared per ODOT standards for the Ravenard Shepherd Broadway Richmond project with a cost of $24,000. This is an extension of Ordinance 16 2021. The reason for the emergency is to keep this project, mo project moving forward. Any discussion? I just wanted Next to, to remind people that we were going to um, share that cost with other, the other communities. That's correct. You took the wind out of my sails. Oh, yeah. Amy? You're good. I caused some confusion with Shannon, so I thought I'd explain this project a little more thoroughly tonight. There are a number of processes through here. In 2020, when we passed the first piece of legislation, it had an estimate, and that was a September 2020 attachment that I gave to you. So now we've completed the first four tasks, and even though the numbers don't actually meet those four for each individual items, the total is still within budget. The next things that you will be seeing on that this year will be hiring an appraiser and acquisition. That'll be one company hiring a review appraiser, and we will also be going after Ohio Public Works to try and get additional funding associated with it because we know 
construction is going to be higher than what was on that 2020 estimate. So we're trying to find some additional funds. But you are correct, Karen, in that this is a four community project and the, the costs are shared uh, associated with that project, uh, phase one and phase two divided up. So there will be a shared cost in there. So, But you will be seeing more legislation as we continue to process once we get the appraiser and we acquire the property, those easements will need to be accept, accepted and, and so on. So you'll continue to see pieces of legislation associated with the same project. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate it. Any questions for Amy? No? All right. Anything else on Ordinance 48, 2023? Ordinance 49, 2023. This ordinance is for the continua continuation of the CRA agreements. The Tax Incentive Review Committee met on March 14th to review all CRA and top agreements. It is recommended to continue CRAs with Omega Amazon, Western Reserve Wire Products, Vistar PFG, Cifron, and O'Reilly Auto Enterprises. Mr. Fury, you said on this committee, um, this will be on the first reading this evening. Do you have anything to add? No, uh, annually we have a meeting of the Tax Incentive Review Committee. Find our uh, Economic Development Coordinator sits on with the representative from the schools. Uh, and the county and our finance department reviewing these agreements to make sure that both on the top agreements and the CRA agreements that the people that are being allowed to get these abatements or these discounts are living up to the commitments that they made. Um, there are, as you'll see, those that uh, were going fine are approved and they'll be, as we go through this, you'll see that there's some cancellations and some changes. So, uh, but. Uh, there's no reason to do this in an emergency. These are annual agreements, and we'll just run the course. Anything else on 49-2023? All right. Ordinance 50-2023. This ordinance is for the continuation of top agreements. These were discussed at the same meeting in those or in Ordinance 50. It is, I'm sorry, in Ordinance 50, 49. It is recommended to continue tops with Keystone Components, Freedom USA, AVA Direct, HC Companies, Horvath Electric, Saffron Power USA and Air Gas USA Inc. This will be on its first reading this evening. Mr. Fury, anything else? No. Anybody else? Ordinance 51 2023. This ordinance is for a new top with 48 hour books. This company proposes to relocate their headquarters from Akron to Twinsburg. They would be adding 38 full time employees and eight time part, I'm sorry, eight part time employees. The top would provide the company with a grant equivalent of 30% of the tax collected, income tax collected, for a total of six years. This will be on its first reading this evening. Mr. Fuhrer, anything else? Well, again, this, since it's an income tax, it will have nothing to do with the school system and the property tax. By the way, we do have a long term agreement in place with the schools regarding property tax that we reimburse them on CRA agreements. But uh, nothing new. This will be a new agreement, as, as you stated. And there's no other information at this time. Bill, is this a 48-hour book? Are they a retail store, or is it some other type of business? Just took my question. Mr. Mr. Bellin, uh, Rebecca's yes. here. In yeah, Rebecca, please. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, just... So, 48-hour books is from Akron. They're relocating their entire headquarters to the 1909 Summit Commerce, which is the Cardinal Health oh. building that's been vacant for, for a couple of years now. Um, and it's a book manufacturing, a book binding, book manufacturing company. So, thank you. Yep. So, what kind of employees do they um, hire? A mixture of both. So, there's going to be admin, of course, but then also people who are um, operating those, um, the facilities of it, the, the book, the actual book component. Um, they would have truck deliveries, distribution center. It's a quite a large. It's fifty thousand square feet, um, the wow. facility. But they do plan to grow quite significantly. The top annual top grant that we've offered them would be the equivalent of, of about uh, $15,600 a year. Curiosity, just curiosity, any idea why it's called 48 hour books? I think, I'm, I'm guessing they get a turnaround time. Turnaround time, 48, 48 hours. hours but good, good, yeah. I, I do know that they, they do bind quite quickly, but I don't know if it's always 48 hours. I, I should ask him that question. And they do hope to, per, they will be purchasing, not leasing um, the building, um, and they hope to move their entire headquarters by fall. Great. Oh, that's great. great. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, ordinance 52, 2023. This ordinance is to modify payouts for in Integral, Inc. The committee is recommending a reduction in the grant payout by 50%. The current benefit is 33%, and this would reduce it 
to 16.5% starting in payout year 2023. If performance standards are met in the future, the committee will reevaluate the return to the full 33%. This will be on its first reading tonight. Mr. Fury, anything to add? It's in the box. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the paper copy that I was using did not have that listing, and I think Mr. Post had the same questions. So. Yeah, first I looked so at it's, it's on its first reading. It's in the box. We'll catch up. Okay. It's, it's in the box. It's just not on the. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? No. Ordinance 53 2023. Oh. This ordinance is to modify payout of Cifron FFR's top agreement. The Tax Incentive Review Committee is recommending no payout for 2022 and to terminate the agreement if performance standards are not met in 2023. This will be on its first reading this evening. Mr. Fury? Again, as we reviewed this agreement, they were not close to meeting what uh, they had committed to for the growth. And uh, we thought it was fair to just suspend it for a year and revisit it in a year. Uh, and if they don't uh, get back in line with that, they're still a valued employee of the community. It's whether they get this and then a discount off the tax front of the uh, tax benefit. And, and the tax benefit we're talking about is, is, is $13,000. I mean, it's, it's not huge, but again, in, in keeping with what the agreement was, it, you know, it, it was reviewed last year. And there was a letter sent this year we're going to just put it on hold and we'll review it again next year and if things are going better we'll put it back in place and if not we'll cancel it anything else on 53 2023 all right and last up this evening is ordinance 54 2023 this ordinance is to enter into a collective bargaining agreement with the opba sergeant unit this will be on an emergency this evening to allow the contract to be entered into as soon as possible as the current contract expired on December 31st, 2022. Mr. Vizana, anything to add? Uh, yes. So first and foremost, I, <clears throat> I would like to thank uh, the negotiation team on, on both sides. Uh, you know, you had uh, Mayor Sam Scafidi, HR Director uh, Tammy Kalale, Police Chief Mason, Lieutenant Brian Donato, uh, and of course, you know, our uh, Twinsburg sergeants and also attorney Joe Hegedish of the OPBA, that's the Ohio Patrol, Patrolman's Benevolent Association. Uh, as as uh, council knows and as the mayor knows and uh, as the public knows, we are in uh, the season of negotiations of our three-year CBAs. Uh, a few weeks ago, <clears throat> the uh, city and the uh, OPBA sergeants uh, union tentatively agreed to the, uh, the uh, basics of a new three-year contract. We uh, hammered out a small detail, which I'll get to here in a second. And uh, before you tonight uh, is the opportunity for the council to ratify a three-year CBA uh, with the OPBA sergeant. So the, the exciting points, uh, the, the takeaways that I want to let council know and the public know about, uh, both parties collectively bargained for a 2% wage increase for the sergeants. Uh, that's on both the probationary rate sergeants and the uh, non-probationary sergeants. We also excitingly uh, have extended and agreed to, on both sides, the opportunity for all of our sergeants to earn a $750 annual training-based bonus. Uh, and through that, uh, should sergeants uh, take an additional eight hours of training to help uh, further uh, themselves as uh, sergeants and police officers, then the city will annually pay out a $750 bonus. It's as simple as that. Um, we also, and I believe council knows about this, but I think we can't say enough about this from the standpoint of our police administration and the mayor's administration. Uh, we also negotiated the payout of a 10% retention bonus, which is a one-time 10% payout, which is based on the uh, sergeant's annual uh, wages. Uh, so that is also a part of the deal here. That'll be paid out in uh, four quarterly payments over the first year of the contract. Uh, and then finally, an, an issue that I always say I enjoy the the bargaining table because you really get to know each other and you get to find out that uh, oftentimes there are smaller things that the, the parties uh, don't discuss in the midst of the CBA, but find out sitting at the bargaining table when they're uh, uh, discussing you know their needs for the upcoming years and one of them was as simple as contracting to make sure that all uniform alterations for sergeants are done at their cost which was past practice uh, but uh, the sergeants wanted to see it in there so excitingly uh, when an individual is promoted to sergeant they obviously 
may or may not need some tailoring done to accommodate the new insignia on their uniforms. And uh, it was fun to put together language uh, that made sure that that was done at the city's point and that the new sergeant didn't have to worry about figuring out how to get their newly earned insignia on there. So again, I, I, I can't thank enough uh, the, the mayor, Tammy, our uh, police administrators, and then also our, you know, we, we uh, have an outside counsel that assists us on labor matters, that's uh, Max Riker. Uh, and then uh, truly the appreciation to our Twinsburg sergeants and attorney Joe Hegedish at OPBA. It was a good, a good collection of bargaining sessions, and uh, I'm excited that the parties have come to a deal. Thank you, Do you have any questions? I think I've covered uh, all of the items uh, in the uh, red line draft that's before you tonight. It didn't look like there was that many changes to that contract. Nope. Yeah, it was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, it was, it was a, a, good, a good set of negotiation sessions. Uh, we started with, uh, you know, the, the proposals, roughly the proposals that are there before you, and we, we hammered them out. And now you see uh, a uh, proposed contract. Thank you, sir. Anything else on Ordinance 54 2023? All right. Uh, next up this evening is miscellaneous. Council, does anybody have any miscellaneous items to discuss? Mr. Deeds? None. Mr. Fury? No, thank you. Mr. Post? Uh, I will be making a motion uh, during the council meeting uh, for Crown Hill Cemetery. They're adding a uh, column. I'm going to pronounce this wrong every time. Someone help me out. And Calabrium. That's it, <laughs> complex, and it's a uh, it's a pretty neat structure that they're going to build. So I'll be making a motion. Uh, it was uh, approved at the planning commission meeting. So I just want to let you know that I will be making that motion. All right. That's all. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Miss Levy. Mr. Mayor. I have nothing. Thank you. Mr. Vizana. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do have one uh, quick procedural comment. Uh, I believe this may be one of the few times that our president and vice president of council have been absent for a meeting. So I, I will offer the following advice to our council here. Uh, when the regular meeting starts, I would uh, advise that a motion for a president pro tem uh, be taken by the council, and uh, that would require a simple majority vote. Uh, motion, second, discussion majority vote and then that individual for the duration of the meeting tonight will act as your temporary council president and will uh, sign in the same manner on any legislation should you so choose to adopt it. Would you call it a, a pro tem president? Pro -tem. Pro -tem. pro tem. Do you have to state like Greg's name when you're yes. doing the motion? That's correct. So yeah. should you Greg want to move forward with Greg, you'd say I, I make a motion to appoint Greg the president pro tem of the council. Yeah, Unless somebody oh, feels Mr. strongly. Co Councilman Gregory Bellin. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anything else this evening? All right. With that being said, this caucus is adjourned at 7.18 p.m. If you would like to address council during the regular council meeting, please sign up at the podium. <laughs>